If you're like me, you're the type of creative person that's also naturally introverted, naturally empathic, naturally in their bubble in their bedroom. And lots of times when we're in our incubation, we can be really attracted to outgoing, extroverted types of people. The people that get us out of the house, they're more outgoing, it always looks like they're having a lot of fun. And a lot of times these types of people are gonna have a positive impact on us. They are gonna get us out of our shell a little bit, but sometimes it can turn into toxic behaviors. What's up y'all, my name is Roger and I create content to empower creative people through self-awareness, positivity, and sometimes spirituality. And today I specifically wanna talk to you creatives that are more introverted. Maybe you have some social anxiety, maybe you're not really familiar with the outgoing lifestyle. You're more comfortable in your own space. However, lots of times we'll develop this fear that we're missing out. We'll develop this kind of insecurity that we might not have a lot of friends because we're not outgoing. And a lot of times we will attract people that will help bring us out of our shell. We will attract naturally extroverted people, especially in relationships because we can be drawn to those people like a fly to a light, a moth to a flame. They look so cool. They're always going out. They're confident in themselves. They're fun. They want us to have fun. And it can feel really good when we actually step outside our comfort zone and we have somebody letting us know that it's safe for us to do so. However, though we can have a good time with these people and they look fun and we might really bond with them, there could be a deeper insecurity that these extroverted types of people are trying to cover up. Some people are going out over and over and over again to distract themselves from the life that they actually have, from the reality that they actually exist in. Now, I'm not saying all extroverted people are like this, but a lot of the time, those are the ones that us introverts and empaths tend to attract. And because there's so much fun, they're so glamorous, it can really be addicting. And this is how us empaths fall victim to narcissistic types of people a lot of the time. Because everything looks so cool, everything looks so fun, they're having a positive effect on us, they're getting us out of the house, they're getting us to experience new things. But over time, we may start to realize that there may not be more to offer beyond that. And this is exactly how my last relationship started. I saw this girl, she was beautiful, she was outgoing, she wanted to go on adventures and do all of these things. And for a while, it was just us two. And then eventually, I got into her friend group and started going out with her friends and started looking at the types of friends that she had that we were going out with. And over time, I started to realize that all these people do is party. And as the relationship progressed and as we even were living with each other I started to see how this girl would let her responsibilities go in favor of this lifestyle to go party to go out to go have fun and that's where it got really conflicting for me because I'm like am I gonna be the bad guy am I gonna be the good guy should I also go out and forget all these responsibilities and just have fun or should I be the guy that stays behind and tries to clean up the mess and if we find ourselves in those kinds of relationships, in those kinds of situations with people, ultimately what we end up doing is taking all of our creative time and putting it on the back burner. We end up sacrificing our time and energy that we would use to create in favor of having fun and doing this cool shit. And that's ultimately what the solution is to all of this, is recognizing how to have a balance. But you can't really tell other people to be more balanced. You can't really tell other people what to do. You can only do it for yourself. 
So once I stepped away from that relationship and I realized that this wasn't for me, I incubated myself. I went back to being that introverted person, but I set the intention for myself to make myself into a better person. And now I set the intention for myself to be more outgoing with just me, not needing another person to pull me out of my shell. I want to be more confident in myself that I can be outgoing and friendly, but I have to put myself in those situations instead of waiting for somebody to come save me. And part of that confidence is coming from being okay to be alone. And one thing that I did recently is I flew by myself to Austin, Texas and stayed at a hostel for seven days with complete strangers. I didn't know anybody and I didn't have anything to do. I had no itinerary. I had no plan at all. All I did every day was I woke up, I went outside and I picked a direction. I went to this cafe, that cafe. I tried to chat with as many people as possible. I tried to ask them, what do you guys do for fun around here? Where should I go today? And I just took people's recommendations. I took that opportunity to go to a different place and be a different person, to be the version of myself that I wanted to be, which is more confident, more outgoing, and more social. Now, after having that experience, obviously back home now, and I'm thinking, how can I take that extroverted Roger and merge it with this introverted Roger to create this holistic person, which I guess is gonna be my final form. And to that, I go back to the solution, which is balance, understanding how to balance myself. And a lot of times for us, it's gonna come internally. We're gonna have to look within to know when we should stay and when we should go. When we feel like, you know, I wanna go out and do something or I have the opportunity to do something versus, you know, I think I really wanna go to the park and shoot a YouTube video and just have alone time today. It's okay to be be introverted. It doesn't matter. Don't listen to anyone else's judgment. If you're weird, you're always in your room. It's okay to be introverted. You have to love who you are. Ultimately, what keeps introverts trapped in their incubation, in their shell, is this fear of judgment that they are introverted. It's okay. You can be introverted and still go outside. I'm doing it right now. I'm talking to myself in a park where people are walking by flying by, biking by, whatever. It's really okay for you to be who you are. But when you find yourself thinking, I want to be more like this, and you set that intention for yourself, then comes time to do the work. Put yourself in different situations and experiment to expand your identity. Once you're more confident in yourself as a person, you will naturally become more confident in yourself as an artist, as a creative person, as an empath. It's all about bringing that energy back into you. So if you dig this video, give it a thumbs up and drop a comment to let me know that I should do more of these kinds of videos. And if you're on board with me, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out so much. This is what I do now. This is my passion. And I'm gonna be putting more and more videos out to empower people like you. And if you are an empathic, introverted person, I just made this playlist up here. It's Empath Empowerment. Other videos I've done in the past where I'm specifically talking to you creative folks that are also empaths. So check this playlist out and I'll see you in the next video. And of course, stay creative.